Hello and welcome to a disruptive episode of our educational videos. Today we want to show you how not to connect an electrolytic capacitor. Now you might ask, how is there a wrong way to connect a capacitor? The answer at the end of the video will shock you. But first, we want to talk about the electrolytic capacitor itself and how it works. Basically, the capacitance of every available capacitor depends on three parameters. The area of two plates, the distance between them and the material between the plates. There are a few field effects on the edges of our plates, but for our explanations they can't be neglected. If we want to get a large capacitor, we could rise the area of the capacitor plates. But this contradicts with our overall wish to make small electric components. So let's minimize the distance between the plates. And this is something electrolytic capacitors can do very well. To get a large area for the plates, we use a thin aluminum foil for the anode and the cathode. This poses no difference to film capacitors. But the surface of the foil for electrolytic capacitors is also roughened. This leads to an even larger area and therefore a larger capacitance. The layer between the anode and the cathode is filled with electrolyte. The electrolyte is usually a liquid that is absorbed into a porous paper strip. One may now interject that electrolyte is also conductive and we have a conductive connection between the anode on the one side and the cathode on the other side. Of course this would be true, but the capacitor is not finished yet. A small but very important detail is still missing. If you have pure aluminum, its surface reacts with the surrounding air and produces a thin layer of aluminum oxide, which is an isolator. The thickness of this oxide layer is around 10 nanometers which would only withstand a small voltage of about a few volts. But with the help of a process called anodic oxidation, we are able to let the oxide layer grow. And a thicker layer can withstand a higher voltage. The process of anodic oxidation works in the following way. We apply a voltage between the two plates, the positive voltage on the anode and ground on the cathode. Electrons will flow from the cathode to the anode and gather there. This triggers a chemical reaction. The aluminum on the surface of the anode transforms into aluminum oxide. The thickness of the layer can be easily controlled by the applied voltage and the duration. So it is very easy to make capacitors withstanding different voltages. This is the reason why electrolytic capacitors are polarized. Only the anode will have a thick layer of oxide. If the voltage to a capacitor is applied the wrong way, the effect of anodic oxidation will reverse. This means the capacitor starts to degrade the oxide layer on the anode and to build up a layer on the cathode, which means a relatively high current will flow. This leads to heat which vaporizes the electrolyte between the two plates. And as we know from physics, vapor needs a lot of space, which leads to an explosive end. So be careful if you use such capacitors. Aluminum is not the only element which is used. Other elements are tantalum and niobium. Their advantage is a much lower equivalent series resistance, ESR. But be careful when you use these types of capacitors. For some packages the cathode is marked and for some packages the anode is highlighted. So take a look in the datasheet if you want to be sure. With this video we want to thank you all for 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. We hope you've learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching.